Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. I think we've done similar problems before. If you do know the link, please let us know in the comment section. We have x squared plus y squared equals 25 and x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 37. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. You probably guessed the solution. Anyway, let's just hold on to it because we're going to try to solve this problem in the general case. And I'll be presenting two methods, and I'll show you a graph from two different sources. Hopefully you'll like them. Please let me know what you think, and let's get started. So we have a quadratic and a cubic. What can I do with this? Substitution. Why don't we just go ahead and isolate y squared from the first equation? That's going to be my first method. So y squared can be written as 25 minus x squared. And from the second equation, I can write y cubed as 37 minus x cubed. So in other words, isolate the powers of y and write them in terms of x, which is kind of nice because if you think about it, oh no, are we going to take roots? No, we don't need to because we have y squared and y cubed. What can we do with that? Think about the least common multiple of 2 and 3. Isn't that 6? Yes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get y to the power 6. But how can we get that? Easy. We can take y squared and cube it. Or we can take y cubed and square it. Both of us, both of us, both of them will give us y to the 6th power. All right. So far so good. So I'm going to cube the first equation. I call this first, by the way. And square the second one. And they're going to be equal. So 25 minus x squared, which is y squared, is cubed. And... 37 minus x cubed, which is y cubed, will be squared. So they are equal. Awesome. So this kind of helps us avoid roots. Because imagine if you use radicals, they will be radical as well as complicated. Now, we're going to expand this, right? But don't worry. I'll do it for you. When you do, you're going to get a hexic equation. This is what it's going to look like. 2x to the 6 minus 75 x to the fourth minus 74 x cubed plus 1875 are you serious x squared yes i am minus 14000 as if that's not enough 14256 with the minus sign that's our constant this is pretty hectic right i mean should i say hectic wait a minute can't we use the hexic formula no because it doesn't exist and imagine if it existed it would probably take up an encyclopedia, right? I mean, just think about what the quintic formula would look like. Anyways, we're not going to be able to solve it, but I know some people are numerical and they like to use approximations, so on and so forth. Be my guest. If you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. And let us know if you use anything like newton Raphson was it the method, or something like that. You can do approximations. Not a big fan of numerical analysis, but I appreciate your efforts. Anyways. So you're thinking, hopefully, there must be a better way, right? Don't you think? Okay, that is the second method. Awesome. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite the system. x squared plus y squared equals 25. A lot of times, rewriting the problem helps you uh, because it, it'll trigger some um, formulas, memories, hopefully something in the brain, right? It's good. Now, Substitution doesn't really help. Can we use elimination? No, not really. But here's what we're going to do. We can take advantage of identities. There's a lot of identities in algebra, right? So factoring, in other words. Can I factor x squared plus y squared? Well, using complex numbers, you could do it. And I don't know if there is a way to solve this using complex numbers. There probably is. But I can't think of it right now. But anyways, you can definitely factor it like this. And then about the cubes, it's a different story. But anyways, some Diophantine equations are actually taken to the complex world. And you can find the solution there. And that's what, not necessarily the same way, but anyways, I talked too much. I was going to talk about Fermat's last term, but that would take forever. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write the x squared plus y squared as x plus y squared and then minus 2xy. Because this term brings uh, three terms. This one brings th three terms. And if you get rid of the one in the middle, then we end up with sum of two squares, which is nice. Know these identities. Very helpful. And with the cube, I can use something similar. Remember, we use the cubic formula millions of times, right? I mean, not that many times, but quite a few. 
and we can kind of write it that way. And remember, this actually helps you solve the cubic equation. Now, we have these two identities, and hopefully you notice that something pops up here. x plus y and xy, right? So we can go ahead and call them something. How about calling this s for sum and calling this p for product? Makes sense, right? So from here, the sum of squares is 25. I know that, right? And this is 37. I get the following. s squared minus, remember this is p, 2p. I'm not going to make the joke. You get it. And then from here, I get s cubed minus 3p. And this is s. s equals 37. Awesome. This is beautiful because this system can be solved. Okay. Awesome. We have two variables, but much, much nicer. Because it's not like sum of powers. It's more like two polynomials. And we can use substitution. Look at this. So this was kind of like a cubic system. Not in X and Y, sort of. It is, but uh, this is much better. Okay? In P and S, in other words. So let's go ahead and isolate P from here. P is S squared minus 25 divided by 2. If I put the P on the right-hand side, right? Add 2P and then subtract 25 and divide by 2. Or just switch these around. They can switch. Okay? So now, we can go ahead and plug it into the second equation because it only has 1P, and that's going to be good. So S cubed minus 3 times P, let's write the S first, times P, and P is going to be replaced with S squared minus 25 over 2, and the whole thing is equal to 37. You see how I was able to isolate p and then plug in p plug in and get a single variable equation nice let's go to multiply everything by 2 2 s cubed don't put a 6 there because 2 is going to cancel out we're going to get this this is easier before we start distributing and then we're going to go oh didn't we see yet 74 before remember with the first method it popped up right and it was actually the coefficient of x cubed it was negative 74 Hmm. So that kind of gives us an idea, maybe. Anyways, let's distribute 2s cubed minus 3s cubed plus 75s equals 74. Guess what? This is going to turn into a very nice equation. This is negative s cubed. Put it on the right-hand side by adding s cubed. Subtract this and keep the 74 there and set the whole thing equal to 0. I put everything on the right-hand side. And that made it the left-hand side. <laughs> kind of confusing, but hopefully you get it. Now, what am I going to do with this? One of the things that I've been telling you all the time, if you have a polynomial equation, check the sum of coefficients. 1 minus 75 plus 74 equals what? 0. Yay! So that means s equals 1 is a solution. Awesome. And then by using this information or knowledge, we can go ahead and factor it. But s equals 1 is going to work for sure. We'll get back to it. If s is equal to 1, then I can kind of write it as s cubed minus s squared plus s squared minus s minus 74s plus 74 equals 0. Awesome. And this is factorable by grouping. And guess what? One of the factors is going to be s minus 1 because it is. As you know, s equals 1 is a solution. And the other factor is going to be s squared plus s minus 74. I hope I'm not skipping too many steps. If I am, please let me know. But I'm, tr I'm kind of leaving out some um, stuff for you to fill out. But if you have any questions, please let us know. So here we get two equations. Uh, one of them is quadratic. This one gives us s equals 1. We're good with that. This one is actually going to give us um, two radical solutions. And s from here is actually going to be, let's see, uh, if you use the quadratic formula, I think it's going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of 300 divided by 2. And I think that you can write it as 3 root 10. So we can kind of set it equal to negative 1 plus minus 3 no, not 3 root 10, 10 root 3, right? Yeah, it's the other way around. 10 root 3 divided by 2. Now, here's the s. What is the p values? If s is equal to 1, I can go ahead and substitute if s is 1. 1 minus 25 is negative 24, divided by 2 is negative 12. So p is going to be negative 12. Let's write it down here. And this gives us a system. Why don't we go ahead and solve this first, and then we'll look at the second one a little bit, not too much, because look how radical that is. But I'll tell you what is going on. S equals 1, P equals negative 12. So from here, hopefully you can guess two numbers whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is 1. And I'm thinking those numbers must be 4 and 3, but one of them is a negative. 
And guess what? They could be x equals 4 and y equals negative 3. Their sum is going to be, you know, 1, positive 1. And x could be negative 3 and y equals 4. Because we have perfect symmetry, they can just switch around, right? Awesome. What happens with the second one, the other s value? You can find the p value, but guess what's going to happen? Let me tell you. You're going to get, and I think p is going to be something like this, 301 minus 20 root 3 over 8, if I didn't make any mistakes. Wow. Look at the values. And by using s and p, you can find x and y from here, but guess what? They're going to be complex. Yay. We only got these two real pairs, and we already talked about it, and the others are complex. And it's hexic, so you get a lot of solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other things, such as the graph from Wolfram Alpha. Yes, good job, Wolfram Alpha. And then the graph from Desmos, obviously, much more colorful, much better. And it's interesting. One of them is a circle. The other one is an elliptic curve, which is pretty interesting, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.